Shout out all Urban Central. Yeah, this put on future hitters. Love to my whole time, Atlanta. Got gotcha. you. And I said, you want to thank everybody who asked. precious time to honor these great people and all the talent, all the work, all the artists, all the songwriters, everybody that's worked on behalf of your company and everybody in this room. Thank you for being here. Bravo. Hey, uh So um, um, I was confused. 
I had to find a way. And um, I met four young niggas, four young kids, right? One was 11, one was 12. Juvie always was sharp. Um, I had a daughter named Magnolia Shorty. May she rest in peace. I'm on the nephew Derek. May he rest in peace. Um, the mother two youngsters was BG and the Wayne. Fresh always been a clown. That's, that's, that's what he do. Like, um, and just on a, you know, I just was trying to, because I was a, a, a real lost youngster, like trying to find a way, because I've been in and out of homes, in and out of jail as a kid. Um, I jumped in the streets at 12 years old. Um, 14 years old, I was wearing two girl Lexus, and 13 years old, I had a mouthful of golds with diamonds in them. And I met some youngsters, and I didn't want them to go my route, right? Uh, BG was heading that route, and I saw that Wayne looked like he was going that route too, so um, I wanted to save their life and get them a different life. My whole mission was to try to spare their life. And I needed help too, because I was reckless, and I needed somebody to spare my life. And the only person that I respected enough to spend my life was my brother. We've been in different centers, different, we, uh, we've been in different decades of music, right? So my way of saving their life was putting them in the studio. The studio is going to be the new streets. If you want to see your homie, you want to see your girl, everybody had to come to the studio. Um, I put them all in private schools and every day, it wasn't a day go by. All I made them do was go in the studio. So I kept them in the studio because they was very young for like two, three years. And if you keep any lion, tiger, bear in the studio, when you let them, uh, in the cage, when you let them out, they're going to attack. And when I let them out, they was young. They was about 14. They attacked the world, right? By then, we signed out a deal with UMG. Dino Divide um, came down. Uh, we brought him in our project, and that one made me go to UMG, and we signed with him. But at the same time, that was a genre of music that we blew up in. It was hard for people right then. It was heavy back then. It was real heavy. Um, everybody was doing their thing, but I let them youngsters out the cage. Juvie was already short, but Wayne, BG, uh, Shorty, they was getting short because I kept them in the studio for years, every day, every day of life, right? So at this point, I just wanted to get them out the streets and save their life. So I made the studio out of the streets, and by then, by the time they 15, 16, they ain't know nothing but the studio. So it couldn't even, if they tried to function different, it was already remotely to me that they needed to do it in the studio. So after a while, we blew up, and uh, Katrina happened. And we had some differences before Katrina. Some came, some left, and um, Katrina happened. I always was tight with Wayne. He always, you know, I was a father like to all of them, to be honest, like, because I was like, their mama gave them to me to raise them, because they was heading in different directions. And New Orleans at this time, we were the murder capital, so they could die like any, at any time, at any minute, any second, that's what it was. Um, so when I got the chance to, be with them a lot and put them in the studio a lot. By the time they were teenagers, nothing mattered more to them than but the studio because I did it to them at like 11, 12 years old. So um, after Katrina, I went to Texas. Wayne went to Miami. He called me. He told me to come to Miami. So I went to Miami and we became like, we was already close, but we came closer than ever because we were like, it's me and you, me, you, and Slim, and we're going to do this shit. And with all due respect to Jay-Z, I remember he said he retired, and Wayne shot his video said, since the best rapper retired, I'm the best rapper alive. And um, a lot of shit changed for us from that moment, but at the same time, niggas were saying, hip-hop is dead. We Southern niggas. We don't know nothing about that type of shit, because this is all we got is hip-hop. <laughs> so when niggas were saying hip-hop is dead, we like, Honestly, like, what the fuck is they talking about, girl? We ain't know nothing about that type of shit, so um, we felt like this our time to just take over hip hop. That's when the birth of Young Money came, Nicki and Drake came, and um, we kind of held hip hop down, right? Um, 
when niggas was saying it was dead, we felt like we was bringing it back to life. And we did that. We did that soulfully. And um, if, you know, you saw the artists and a lot of artists that we birthed. I could name a lot of them. A whole bunch of them that we made millionaires. At this point, we just thinking about surviving. We survived the warfare in New Orleans. Now we're surviving in life. And we did a great job at it, but you see all the artists that's successful, right? And we got a long list. I could give you my, I could stay here and give you 10, 20 names that we, or maybe more that we made successful, right? But what was more important to us than all the jobs that we kept, because if we didn't do this shit, a lot of people would have lost their jobs back in that field. And me as a young man, a lost young man, I was just trying to save a few niggas' lives. And I needed my life saved myself, and that's what my brother did for me. Because me and my brother been in and out of boys' homes since a kid. Um, we stayed in Canada. We lived pillar to post. And I jumped in the field, which we call the streets, and I had to find myself. But living in different genres of music, at this point, everybody then came up. And we came up, and we gave so many people lives. So once we started, all I thought about was saving four lives, and we ended up saving thousands of motherfucking lives. <laughs> and, um, I, give a, I give all my gratitude to my brother, because without my brother, um, he was like my father, because we never had no family. So it was always me and my brother and my sister. So I give my gratitude for him saving my life, trying to save other niggas' lives. And um, this shit gonna always be wine soon be forever for me. And it's cash money for life. And um, I'm rich gang to the death of me. I was fortunate enough to work with great people like Monty and Avery. Me and them, we got brotherhood. Um, Sylvia Rome, um, Doug and Mel Morris, um, just the whole cash money staff, just everybody that's that's independent and a lot of people that make stars that y'all don't even get to see or know about. Fresh, like, that nigga held it down, man. Juvie was like a general in the clique. Uh, you know, Moolah was like the everlasting of the clique, man. And Jizzle, like, hey, look, bitch, a gangster, he is wild, and you heard me, and he home now. But um, this shit wasn't easy for us. We, it wasn't easy. Just we had to find our way in life before we could even do this shit because we had no parents. We lost everything at a young age and in and out of boys' home. We watched our father get killed right for our lives. And um, the shit was hard for us. And in and out, we lived in Canada for years and years, coming back in and out of boys' homes. And, I had to figure it out, and my brother saved my life, and I was trying to save their life. And like I say, this shit, why I'm still be forever for me. Um, it's cash money for life, and I thank everybody that came out. Uh, Lior, you've been solid with me and my brother for 30 plus years. Brian, you did a great job with us. I got partners like your guy who's seen this shit, and niggas believe this shit, because niggas didn't believe that hip hop was really real to A nigga came in New Orleans, they seen we got 50, 60 cars, and, Houses, bras, bottles, and bottles, and we fucking everything off of you. That shit was real, you know what I'm saying? Um, hey, sound like you, Shout out to my nigga P, like Top Dog. These the new generals of the game. And, um, was it Top Dog? Nah, we made a nigga know this shit was real, man. I, I, I appreciate yeah, it, though. Yeah. For real. First of all, y'all know I'm doing all that talking. <laughs> I'm doing it today for Lior, because Lior, I appreciate you calling me and um, asking us to do this. It was an honor for us. This was amazing. And you put on a hell of a show, you too, my Vicky, Wendy, Michelle, Kia, all y'all. I want to thank you. I want, I want to thank Monty and Avery. We've been partners in crime ever since we started. Sylvia, Mel, and Doug. Um, just everybody that's a part of Universal UMG. It's so many people, it's too many to name. But I'm going to name a couple Mike Harden, Wendy, um, Katrina.
Argentina, um, you know, just everybody. But I wanted to say that I'm so proud of Jovi Wayne, Jeezy, Turk, um, Fresh, because I saw them when he was in that studio. They was in competition with each other, friendly competition. And we were going there. We started off doing two songs and ended up doing five songs a night. And they was in there competing like a basketball player, for real. And they'll catch a calendar and come back with their verses and they'll show you that each one I want their verse to be the best. But what really makes me so proud is they're going on in their career with generation wealth, doing other things outside of music and keep the music going, that makes me more proud than anything about them, you know. Um, me and my brother went through a lot. We, got, we had to go through a lot of stuff to get to this point because to see his sister pass away in the bed, Indian style, and they had to break her legs to put her in a body bag, we had to go through that. To grow up, me and my brother, that someone told us, I'm not gonna say who it is, that I ain't gonna never be shit, and I ain't worth a quarter. Not five nickels, not 25 pennies, for real. But you gotta do better than that to break me. I ain't breakable like that. You, know? yeah. you gotta do better than that. So, it made me wanna go harder and work harder. Because I got a few more quarters now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can talk about that. With, because she, they was wrong. You don't do a kid like that. You don't treat children like that. But what it really did for me, motivated me to be the best. I would never let no one discourage me to tell me what I can't do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's how you're supposed to do it. Don't let no one tell you what you cannot do. You do your thing. And you can't get down. You just, that's the only way you're going to win. I'm, I'm a winner. I don't like to lose. I love to win. I love to be the best. But to be the best to myself. And my brother, you know, me and him, we talk all the time and come up with strategies and plans and just to, we always wanted to be great. You know, so to my people, Carlos, Greg, Hot Boy, my brother Polo, Fresh, Juven, Jeezy, Turk, Wayne, I love y'all, bro. Ain't nobody else alive gonna do what we done. Ever. Check, check, check. Listen, I'm broadside, nigga.